Chimere is a distant planet. It is defined by waves of life brought from Earth and set free to evolve independently in this new context. The indigenous life of the planet, swarms of microbes called magic by the people who live there, are what harvest Earth organisms and make copies on Chimere. As the asteroid which concluded the Mesozoic never struck Chimere, dinosaurs remain the dominant terrestrial megafauna. Falconry is the practice of training birds for cooperative hunting with a human partner. There are many birds of prey used by falconers in Chimere. Falconry is used purely for entertainment and to bond with an animal, especially amongst nobles, but mostly it is used for hunting. While some species are used like a hound to flush out game so an archer can land a kill, usually the hunter is the one disrupting a habitat and sending their bird in as the weapon. Because of this, small game is generally the target, and they are especially proficient at not only clearing out vermin, but can also subsist on them, although Telmede falconers with guildback eagles have had success bringing down some impressively large prey such as Ibix and Tacken, by sending them off cliffs. Getting a bird comfortable working with people, a process called manning, is critical to developing a working relationship between falconer and raptor. Although there are specific terms for trainers of each different type of bird, for the purposes of this episode, I will default to falconry and falconer in its most generic use. A challenge that raptors face in Chimere that they don't encounter on Earth is pterosaurs, specifically the tapajards of the bat-hawk family. They are, as a general rule, faster than raptors, and the open nests many raptors use is a vulnerability, not to mention the larger, less agile species are themselves on the menu. Because of this, large eagles are quite rare in the known world. Closed forests do offer refuge, which is why many large raptors such as harpy, zebra, and crested eagles are found in this habitat. These birds usually lack temperament to bond with falconers and require so much food that they do not make practical companions, though some falconers train them for the spectacle. Highlands are also a sanctuary. The thin membranes, which are used for the wings of many pterosaurs means that they don't take well to colder temperatures common in the highlands. The guildback eagle is said to be an exception to this rule. They have impressive speed and endurance, being one of the few raptors able to outpace a bat hawk in open flight, and their range includes many open lowland territories. Their nests are still a point of vulnerability. It is assumed that they represent simply the most recent of large eagles to have short-term success, but are eventually doomed for a similar fate of earlier large eagles to eventually be outcompeted by bat hawks. Although given that their current population and success, others think that they may have found an equilibrium, especially since they are present for a million and a half years and showing no sign of decline, unlike other large eagles that have gone extinct despite more recent harvest. Even so, they nest in the mountains and are most common in places where tapajards do not frequent, so ultimately aren't as much of an exception to the rule as Chimeran falconers espousing their prestige of the guildbacks might suggest. In general, there are three types of birds recognized by Chimeran falconers, each with their own benefits and challenges. Broadwing, Longwing, and Shortwing. Broadwings, which include most eagles, buzzards, and hawks, are soaring and gliding species. In the context of Chimere, these birds are rare outside of highlands. Even small broadwings are a viable prey to a tapajarid. Flying high in the open puts these birds in a place of vulnerability, but it is what they need to do to find prey. However, if there is an abundance of game like rabbits, marmots, and pheasants, broadwings truly shine. Long wings are kestrels and other falcons. They are extremely swift birds that need a lot of open space to fly and regular exercise. While they can often outpace bat hawks in a swoop, bat hawks are quicker in an incline and comparable over level ground, so falcons are not especially common in Chimere. Long wings thrive as predators of small birds, so if these targets are abundant, long wings make ideal f birds for a falconer. Short wings are birds such as goshawks and other true hawks. 
They are burst flyers and extremely agile, thriving in forests. The short wings mean they are less likely to bump into things as they fly, and there's not much wind resistance in flight, so their wings can flap a lot more quickly, though it is extremely expensive in energy, and as a result, they aren't nearly as efficient as other raptors and need a lot more food. Short wings are by far the most abundant raptors in Chimere due to being adapted for territory few large pterosaurs inhabit. Crested eagles are often classified as short wings by Chimere and Falconer's ad. Although they are eagles, their short wings and burst flight puts them much more in line with short wings in training and practice. The most common bird for falconers to train and keep is the southern goshawk, the quintessential short wing. They are burst flyers and astonishingly agile. Despite being so athletic in short distance flight, they are quite content to lounge about. Unlike other falcons, they do not require a whole lot of exercise. They are clever enough to quickly pick up on training, but not so much so that they need regular enrichment. Because of this, they are often considered the ideal starting bird, and also perfect for falconers who may not have time to regularly train, exercise, or entertain a bird due to other responsibilities. As long as you take them out to hunt for a few hours every few days, they will be content to feed on whatever you give them in the interim. While not social birds, they do readily cohabitate with not only other goshawks, but with some other birds like red-winged buzzards, making them in many ways the ideal bird for a practical falconer. The red-winged buzzard is another popular bird, and a strong bird to begin with if one does have a lot of open territory to falcon in. They are usually common for a broad wing, easily bond with, and readily breed in captivity. Because of their intermediate size, they also go after a wide range of small game up to the size of a rabbit. They are quite agile and easy to train, and return to their falconer if a threat is spotted, excellent traits for a bird out in the open. They have been known in the known world. Blah, blah, blah. They have been in the known world for a million and a half years, and are a species of Buteo endemic to Chimere. As stated before, they happily roost and share space with goshawks. Between these two birds, most falconers can find a personal bird that can work in whatever convenient local hunter ground or permission, as it's called in falconry, the falconer has access to. Long wings are generally considered poor starting birds in general. They are highly athletic and require a lot of exercise, often daily flying, and can attract predators. A falconer must keep an eye on them during training. They are not as easy to train on return to their falconer as buzzards, so often require a lot of reinforcement. If one is to start falconry with a long wing, such as if a person lives in a place with a lot of open territory and few pterosaurs, such as the Arvel of Highlands, a brown falcon is a good bird to start with. While not as fast as the peregrine falcon of Earth when they swoop, brown falcons of Chimera are faster in open, level flight. This is often said to be why the common falcon and peregrines aren't found in Chimera, but recent studies have shown the success and spread of peregrines throughout Earth to be a pretty recent change, and that it is more likely peregrines were never harvested. They are imported and popular for spectacle due to their speed, but brown falcons are generally seen as a more practical bird for a falconer who wants to hunt rather than have a show bird. Falconers of the Arvel of Highlands much prefer brown falcons to all other birds. The Chimerian Kestrel takes well to training, and their notorious capacity to hover allows for a great degree of precision, though their small size does come with some concerns of their fragility. And some schools prefer falconers trained with red wings or goshawks so that they can appreciate just how delicate even a sturdier bird is before handling something as small as a Kestrel. Guildbacks do take well to training, but they require a lot more food and exercise than a red wing. They are much faster than most broad wings, as their wings aren't quite as specialized for efficient soaring. They do not recommend it for beginner falconers, as their attachment to a single falconer means that they require that falconer to take care for and exercise them, and they need a lot of enrichment and exercise to be effective. A guildback falconer can usually only have one bird at a time, and it is considered a full-time job. The power of their hunting and game that they can provide does make it worth the effort, 
and they are certainly a lot to be said for their prestige. In Kaleen schools, the most prized bird is the Chimeran Osprey. Although superficially similar to Seahawks of Earth, they usually give their own species designation, if not genus, given their adaptations for the context of Chimere. They are arguably broad wings, although their wings converge in shape closer to falcons, which limits their flight efficiency, but not so much that it compromises the weight that they can carry. Like Earth Seahawks, they hunt fish in a range of freshwater and marine habitats. While many Kaleen get more efficiency from fishing in long nets, Osprey fishing is a popular and prestigious sport. They are the largest seafaring raptor, as tapajards are quite common in the seas, but their agility does give them an edge. They also build highly complex roofed nests, sometimes compared to the lodge of a beaver, which allows them to roost safely in a way many raptors struggle to do. Owls are rarely trained, and mostly considered a novelty bird, although this can be quite successful in the hands of the right falconer. Hunting more by sound than sight requires a different set of prompts and training, and because of this, most Chimeran falconers don't utilize them outside of niche application. Free States falconers do prize the eagle owl for its hearing, allowing it to detect and catch vermin in storehouses, although the reality is that cats are a much more practical vermin slayer in this context. Vultures, also a type of broad-winged bird, generally don't seem to attract the vitriol of tapajards. The most successful vultures are all quite social species, which does seem to deter the pterosaurs. As they are generally scavengers, most falconers don't bother with vultures, but the keen nose and intelligence of the rainbow vulture does mean that they have a distinguished place among scouts. Numerous search and rescue missions have been resolved because of the keen nose and high vantage point of rainbow vultures. Not every bird used in Chimeran falconry has a counterpart on Earth. Enantiornithian, for example, are recorded as being used by falconers beyond the known world, as they are the dominant bird clade in the planet overall. In the known world, fire kites are the most common Enantiornithians used in falconry. While in the wild they are notorious for using fire to smoke out and even kill their prey, they are quite capable of killing with tooth and talon. In practice, they are a compromise of broad and short-winged birds with some soaring capability, but comprising efficiency for agility and burst speed. They will readily perch with a falconer and only take off once released, which allows them to overtake rodents, small birds, and lagomorphs on the prairie. They can also be trained with fire, something the Shu have put to good use in several military applications. Parrots have a clade of raptorial birds unique to Chimere. Most common and favorite to train is the Poppenhawk. They are a short-winged bird. Unlike the easily managed Goshawk, though, they are extremely intelligent, and this comes with a suite of pros and cons. They can be trained to perform a wide range of tasks, and killing with a powerful beak means they can strike well above their conventional weight class of a bird their size. However, they are extremely high nutritional needs, and they're highly territorial and prone to mood swings. Their intelligence can also be difficult to manage. The Greater Poppenhawk is an eagle-sized cousin, and they present similar issues with the added challenge of being much larger and more powerful. Both are considered only viable for a highly experienced falconer who is willing to accept that their bird may not tolerate any other birds sharing their handler. Cockatrices, terror birds, teratorns, and pterosaurs have all been trained by ambitious falconers. While all major schools of falconry have chapters of these four in their treatises, they are generally considered too dangerous and unpredictable to use the Golden Territorians are popular with shoe falconers. Common cockatrices are particularly notorious, wherein juveniles are quite social and make for surprisingly easy to tame and train companions that are exceptional hunters of large game like deer and boar. Unfortunately, adults are far less social, and there are enough instances of adult cockatrices having an off day and lashing out, and at up to 300 pounds it only takes a quick bite to activate the thrust reflex of their talon to kill a person. 
They are recorded instances of a trained cockatrice killing their handler and turning man-eater than of successful partnerships, and most schools advocate against working with these large and dangerous birds. Amongst the Picardiant, falconry is part of the rite of passage that initiates must master before they can earn the title of Karatoan. Goshawks are the easiest to train, but most choose to work with Karakai, the smallest of the firebird genus Pyrostrixis. For thousands of years, this bird has lived near Picardian settlements and hunted vermin. Much like house cats, it appears that they at least partially domesticated themselves with this proximity. They are still perfectly capable of surviving in the wild, and a striking variety of coloration is the most obvious sign of domestication, aside from their comfort around people. A mildly venomous bite and powerful talons allows them to strike prey that outweighs them, although they prefer mice and other very small prey. They are, like other Picardian firebirds, small wing flyers who thrive in dense forests. They are highly intelligent, can take well to training, and being a moderately social predator are comfortable sharing space with others of their kind, but their intelligence often comes with a frustrating contrarian streak that can make for a fairly demanding companion. For those Keratone initiates who do develop a bond with a Karakai, they enjoy a long-lasting partnership with an ally that can not only chase down and catch small game and vermin that the hunter has flushed out, but also flush out large game for the hunter to shoot, which most birds can only do one or the other, making the Karakai a highly prized and versatile companion. As hunting companions and beloved pets, Birds of prey are an impressive and engaging animal which have a highly respected reputation. They are prized by nobility and often used as a symbol of status or skill, The red wings and goshawks are also quite affordable and practical to train and keep, such that they are popular amongst the lower classes as well, meaning it is a sport and practice that can be enjoyed and employed by all. Thank you to Cleanly Moss for sponsoring this episode. I've had an interest in birds of prey, and their importance to Kairatoan in particular is a long-standing part of Chimere's lore, but it was an exciting opportunity to learn more about the history of falconry and its potential utility for the peoples of Chimere. Thanks again to Cleanly Moss, to my Patreon patrons for your support, and thank you for watching. Stay fantastic, everyone. Cheers, folks! Mm -hmm.